Okay, so this is a short tutorial on how to create something like this ottoman here. Um, we'll simplify it a little bit in, uh, in our one, but something quite similar to this. So as you can see, the top part is, is the most complex, and that's the one that we'll focus on first. So back in Max, we'll start in the top viewport, and with a box primitive, I'll draw it out. And then we can go and change some settings here. So I'll make the length 100 centimeters, the width 60 centimeters, and the height 20 centimeters. We need some segments here. So I'll give it 30 segments on the length, 20 segments on the width, and three segments on the height. In fact, I think maybe two segments on the height. Okay, and then I'll right click to drop the tool. Right click on the select and move tool and right click on the spinners to center this on the scene. Okay, why is it doing that? Okay, so now um, if I press F4, you can see my box. Now um, at the moment uh, the color's not easy to see, so I'll just make it a gray. So what we need to do next is we need to apply an edit poly modifier and we need to switch to vertex mode um, and actually let me rather go to polygon mode and I want to delete the bottom polys. So I'm going to go right to the middle here. I guess these must be the middle polys and then I'm going to go to my selection section and I'm going to grow my selection. Okay, and then I need to, in fact, this is not a very efficient way of selecting this because I've got to go and then manually select all these other ones. So what I'd rather do is click away. I will drag across here to select all the bottom polys. And then in the front view, I will hold down Alt and drag across here to deselect the side polys. So if I switch back to perspective, you can see I now have all those bottom polys selected. I'm going to delete them because I don't need them. Okay, so um, we're going to switch to edge mode and I'm going to select the edges around the top here. So I'm going to double click on an edge to select it and then hold down control and double click on an edge to add it to my selection. Hold down control, double click there and another one here. Okay, so we've got all of those edges selected. I want to now go to soft selection and use soft selection and I need to adjust the fall off. Okay, so it's not quite as extreme and I'm just going to move on the Z axis down so that I get kind of a a drop off at the edge. I'll click away. Now I'll switch to vertex mode. Now I want to count five across and five up. So one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm selecting verts. I'm going to turn off soft selection at the moment. And then just holding control, I'm going to take five rows and another one, one, two, three, four, five, and again, and I'm just gonna go all the way across here selecting every fifth row vertically and horizontally. Okay, so now I have all of those verts selected. I'm going to turn soft selection on again. And I need to increase my fall off so that it kind of goes all the way to the edge. And then I'm going to change the pinch value so that it's kind of like a peak, like a volcano shape. 
So now what will happen is when I move on the Z axis down, I get those little dimples, which is what I want. Okay, now I'll click away, exit, sub object mode, and now I have the beginnings of the top of my, um, my ottoman. Um, I'm going to apply a turbo smooth modifier which is going to soften those edges. Okay, so that looks quite decent. Um, I think what I'm gonna do also is just go back down to Edit Poly Edges, and I'm gonna just select the edges around the bottom without soft selection on. Okay, and once again, I can do this by selecting in my front view. Okay, let me just go and select those edges. And let's see what we got there. Oh, I need to turn Turbo Smooth off. That would help. Okay, and then I'm going to hold down Alt and deselect. So I've just got those bottom edges selected. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Scale. And just on the X and Y, I'm going to scale that in a bit. Not very much, just a bit. So what's going to happen now when I go back up to Turbo Smooth is I get a nice kind of rounded bottom to it, which is looking good. Okay, so now we've got up to this point, I want to add another Edit Poly modifier above the Turbo Smooth and go to Edge Mode. And now we need to select the edges running through these dimples. So double click, hold down Control, and we're just going to go across. And continue holding control. Let's see what have we missed here. OK, so now I've got all of those selected. I want to create a shape out of those for the piping. So I'm going to go down in my Edit Edges to Create Shape. OK, and if I exit this Edit Poly, you'll see that I now have a new shape here. And I'll just call it Piping. And set it to the same color. And in the rendering section, I'll enable in renderer and enable in viewport and just bring that color, sorry, bring that thickness down to something that looks okay. All right. Um, yeah, I think I could make it a little bit thicker. Okay. All right, just so it's more noticeable. So now we have our piping. The next thing we need is our buttons. So I'm going to do that on the side here. I'm just going to use a sphere. And I'll create the sphere first. I will call it button. Same color. It needs to be smaller. OK, and Let's just go and have a look at it here. OK, and I'll right click to drop the tool. And then in my uh, scale section, I'll choose non-uniform scale. And I'll just scale it on the Z axis so that it's a flat kind of button shape. OK, so now we need to position it and make sure it's the right size. So select and move. And in my top viewport, I'm going to position my first button. OK, so it's a bit big. So let's just take the radius down a bit. OK, that's about right. And then we need to position it in our front or our left view. 
And now I need to just inspect it in my perspective view just to make sure it looks good. Okay, it needs to sink in a little bit. Okay, so now we're ready to make copies of this. Um, so holding shift, I'll make a copy to the next dimple and say I want to but I want them to be instances, which means if I make changes to one of them, they'll all change. Then I'm going to select all three buttons in my Scene Explorer and then hold down Shift and make a copy up. And, okay, I'm just gonna cancel this because I can see that this one copy here is off. Okay, that's better. And this one also, take number two. One, let me just move that. Okay, they just need to be positioned properly. Okay, let's do that again. So, three buttons, hold down shift, make a copy up to the next dimple, and we're gonna need here one, two, three, four copies or instances. Okay, perfect. So now let's go and have a look in our perspective view. And now we have a nice top to our ottoman. So let's select all of this stuff, group it, and I'll call it ottoman top. Okay, and now we can move on to uh, the base of the ottoman. I'm gonna to need to move up this group to make some space for it. I'm just eyeballing it here. I'm not working according to any special specs. And then again, I'm gonna create a box and I will use my top viewport as a reference. Okay, and then in perspective view, we can actually start making some adjustments now. So I'll make the length And the width, a bit narrower. Okay, we'll bring the height. Whoops, let's just make sure that's right. We'll bring the height down a bit. I don't need all these segments, so I'm just going to zero those out to one each. And okay, that looks relatively good. I'm going to right click to drop the tool and I'll move this up to position it. Okay, so um, I'll call this base. Same color. And now we need to just make a few edits here. So I'm going to apply the edit poly modifier. And we're gonna go into edge mode, and I'm gonna just select one of these edges here, and then choose under my selection roll up, ring, which goes all the way around. Then I'm gonna go to my edit edges, and I'm gonna choose the connect settings. And I'm gonna choose three segments. I'm going to spread them out so that they're closer to top and bottom. And then OK. All right, then I'm going to use my selection and choose, um, whoops, I need to click away. I'm going to choose one edge on this side and choose ring again. And then go down to connect settings. <clears throat> Spread these ones out a little bit more. And OK. And then on this side, one edge ring again and connect and just bring those in a little bit. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm creating additional geometry around the corners and the top and the bottom so that when I apply the turbo smooth modifier I don't get a very rounded shape. So let's do that now. Let's apply the turbo smooth modifier. And you can see that I get a nice kind of rounded padded kind of shape. So I'm just going to move that up into position. 
And then what I'm going to do is apply a taper modifier. And we'll taper this out a little bit. And then we can scale it in a bit. I just need to check these. All right, so that's a fairly funky looking um, ottoman. Now we need to create our legs underneath that. So I'll just make one. So again, I'll start with a box and on the side here, I'll create one, right click to make it and then select and move. I'll just move it into position. And now we can make some adjustments to the height and the width. Okay, and then I'm going to apply an edit poly modifier. I'm going to go to edge and I'm going to select the bottom inside edge. and just move it a little bit over like that. And then I'm going to select all the edges just by dragging over the whole lot and I'm gonna to go to chamfer settings and just zero that out and just set that up to a slightly higher value so that we get these nice kind of beveled edges there. Okay, so now I need to make a duplicate of this to the back of the ottoman. So select and move, shift, drag. And we'll make it an instance. So if we need to make changes, we can. Okay, and then we're gonna select both of those. And instead of um, making duplicates, we're gonna use mirror. And we'll make sure it's on copy. We'll adjust the value it needs to be on the y-axis and move those copies over so it's mirroring the other side okay so now we have an ottoman with the legs the base and the top so I'm going to select all the parts that make up the base group it call it Ottoman base and then I'll select those two groups and group those and just call it Ottoman. Okay, so now we have one whole group containing everything in it and that's our Ottoman finished. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you next time.